Hello, this video is about the history and the changes to the 10-foot head DWV plumbing test. It's brought to you by buildingcodecollege.com and Glenn Mathewson. I hope you enjoy. DWV stands for drain, waste, and vent. And this is just an example of an ABS pipe that will be used to drain, waste, and vent all the nasty stuff running through our house and into the sewer. And we don't want that nasty stuff and those gases and the smells and the methane coming into our houses. So we have to make sure that our DWV is air and gas, basically gas tight. We generally test that with water. Um, many of you guys may have noticed in the 2015 International Residential Code, in the Chapter 25 plumbing section, there was a pretty big change to testing. If you look here, water tests. It went from a 10-foot head to a five-foot head. And so what that means is when they're testing the plumbing systems, they cap off all the openings and they fill the water up at least 10 feet higher than the last fitting or connection. And that way the gravity pressure from that 10-foot column of water is able to create a pressure uh, and make sure we don't leak out there. So let's explore that. I had someone ask me how far back this 10 foot head test went when they noticed this change in the 2015 IRC. So let's hit the collection and let's explore. Um, first, I'm just gonna take us to the Southern Building Code, Southern uh, Building Code Congress International, and we're just not gonna talk much because my oldest standard plumbing code from then is 1997, and that is just not old enough to be of any interest. So we'll go to the BOCA code. This is my oldest BOCA plumbing code. BOCA is building, uh, building officials and code administrators. This was primarily the northeastern part of the country. So if we come here and we go to testing, we'll look right here and we'll see 10 feet of pipe, uh, 10 foot head of water right there, 10 foot head. So Boca, at least back to 78, was 10 foot head. So the final of those three legacies was the Uniform Plumbing Code. And this is actually back when, before it was IATMO, this is when it was the Western Plumbing Officials. My oldest edition is 1955. Um, boy, the hunt is on to find the older ones of these. But if we go here and we come into this part about testing, um, where is it? Testing right here, and we can see right there, 10 foot, 10 foot head. Oops, let me move the camera. There you go, 10 foot head. So in 1955, by the Western plumbing officials, also 10 foot head. Somebody else was making a code in 1955 though. It was the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, and they wrote a national plumbing code with some other contributors in 1955. Let's crack this one open, see what they said about the 10 foot head. Um, here we go, air test, and that's air test, that's final test, 15 minutes, oh, here we go at the top, I'm not paying attention, right there, 10 foot head. Okay, so both of these organizations in 1955 were going for the 10 foot. Um, all right, that's it for model codes, but that's not it for codes. Let's dig back even further now, and I'm gonna move you to my collection of city, local, state, and whatnot type of things. So I've got this uh, Sarasota, Florida, 1947. If we come here to the test, it says, the method of all tests shall be determined by the plumbing inspector. Wow, okay. Uh, and under normal conditions shall be a water test. Basically, Sarasota, Florida said, you gotta talk to your inspector, they get to decide. Let's go back in time further. We can go to uh, Evansville, and I have no idea what state this is in. The book doesn't say, but it does say it's 1940 from Evansville. What were them Evansvillians doing back then? Um, do, 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 10 foot head, 10 foot head back to 1940. We're gonna go further though. Let's go to Connecticut in 1915 to the city of Bridgeport. All right, I think I have a stop in here. Yep, there we go. And let's see what was happening. Now we're over 100 years old. Um, it just tells us that when roughed in, the waste vents and back air pipes and traps are first tested by water with sufficient air pressure in the presence of an inspector when practical. Okay, so pretty loose there. They basically said test it with water, uh, hopefully in front of your inspector, 1915. We're still going back in time. Let's go to Baltimore, 1908. So far, we, uh, we got the 10-foot head back to 1940. Otherwise, it all just seems to be talk to your inspector. Here we go, Baltimore, 1908. The inspector of plumbing shall be notified. Da, da, da. All inspections shall be made as soon as possible after such notification. 
Uh, here we go. And tested with either water, smoke, or peppermint test. No part of the plumbing shall be covered from view. And that's it. No head, no pressures. Just simply test it with your inspector. And then finally, the last one, and this is the super surprise. I love this book. I bought this one just hoping to get some ideas of what was going on back in the 1800s with plumbing and heating before there were really any codes that I could get my hands on. And so this was just a, a random standards book. Um, if you open it up here, you can see Elementary Treatsy by Correspondence Schools. But look what the treasure that I found in the back of this. I found that they reprinted right here the 1881 New York Code. So now we can look at 1881 in New York, as old as I can go. And what do we find here? It's kind of cool. If you can tell I'm building up to something, something different. Where is it? Right here. Shall be tested. The water test applied by closing the lower end of the main house drain, filling it with water, blah, blah, blah. If the drain or any system is to be tested separately, there must be a head of water at least six feet above all parts so I just think that's pretty cool. We finally have a number other than 10 feet. It's not the five feet, or uh, yeah, it's not the five feet that we have here, but six feet. So back in 1882 in New York, six foot head, and then it went for a while with just these fluffy, talk to your inspector, he gets to decide, he or she, and then we move into the model codes. Okay, so this just gives us a little taste of the history of this. It does not, though, give us the story yet of why the 2015 dropped to five feet. We're gonna go there next with a whole different kind of research. All right, so let's go to a web browser and let's go up here and put in iccsafe.org. That's gonna take us to the ICC website and get us started. So we'll go over here to this link, uh, products and services, and drop down to code development. Clicking here will take us to the code development page, and at the top you can see the link for the current development cycle. This is for the work going on to create the 2021 codes. Uh, but three down you can see the link for the code development archives. Let's click there. And this will take us to the archives. Everything from the 2009 IRC and uh, more recent is going to be available electronically. We're looking at a change in the 2015 IRC, so we're going to go to this link here for the work that was done in 2012 and 2014. So this is going to take us to the page that's going to show us all three years of work, Group A in 2012. You can see here the codes that were done in 2012 for Group A. That's not the IRC. So we'll go down to the next one here, scrolling down. Here we see 2013 Group B, and if we look in this list, we do see IRC. So now we're in the right spot here. And let's go to the proposed changes, because though we know the section number in the IRC that was changed, we don't know the um, title of the actual code change. So we'll start by going to the proposed changes. Here you can see all of the Group B changes, and we'll scroll down this list and look for IRC plumbing. Okay, so here's IRC building. That's not what we want. We'll go a little further down. There's mechanical and here we go here's plumbing so we're going to click on this and open this pdf this is going to open the pdf within your web browser and i find it a little easier to search the pdf when i download it directly to my computer so i'll use the download button up here in the right and download this and then open it in a separate window so i'll save this and we'll give it a few seconds i'll grab this other page and let me pull it over here into uh, the screen we can see. So we know the code section that changed is 2503 so I'm going to put that up into the search box here and it'll bring up a list of results for 2503. Let's take a look at this first one and I'll kind of show you what a code proposal looks like. Um, here you can see at the top we've got the proposal number that's what we're looking for for the change we have. This one is RP3-13. You can see who the proponent is and the contact information to reach out to them. You can see the changes they're suggesting with uh, strikeouts for removed text and underlined for add text. And then underneath here is the important part. This is the part that provides the proponent's reason statement. This is the explanation as to why they believe the code should be changed. And this is education. This is where you learn behind the words uh, that are actually printed in the IRC and you learn the why 
you learn what got them in here. So we're going to now go ahead and search down. I know I'm in the right spot because this is the subject we're talking about. So we're going to scroll down until we find the five foot head. Aha, here we go. Ten foot is struck through and five foot is underlined. So let's go ahead and blow this up. And now you guys pause the video and you can read the reason statement that got this into the code for yourself. Okay, now let's go back to this main page. And what I like to do is skip past all the rest of the procedures of code changes and go straight to the final summary. This is going to show me what happened at the end of the whole process and, and exactly how this was approved. That's going to help me know what documents I need to go back in to look through. So we can scroll down this list of results and we're looking for the residential plumbing. Here we go. And we can find the, the section we're dealing with, which is RP8-13. And we see that it is approved as submitted. And that's what AS stands for. It stands for as submitted, meaning there were no modifications throughout the whole process to what the original proponent put forward. As modified AM would mean it was modified in the first hearing. And then as modified by public comment, AMPC means it was modified in the public comment hearing. And then D means it was disapproved. What as submitted doesn't tell us is whether someone did submit a public comment in contrary to the committee's uh, results, but yet that just didn't affect the outcome and wasn't approved. Before we go into that, let's just go to the committee action results and let's see what the committee did actually say in their approval of this proposal. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to download this from my web browser and put it into a PDF viewer. It really just makes the searches a lot easier. Let's bring this uh, new PDF viewer over now into our screen. Okay, so now that we have this, we don't have to search by section number. Now we can search for the proposal number, which was RP8. So we'll put RP8 in here. We should get a lot fewer results. And we'll click on the one that we look for. Here we go, RP8. And here you can see the committee action was to approve it as submitted. And I'll go ahead and pause and we'll blow this up and take a look. And you can read it what the committee's reason statement for approving it was. Now I want to show you another place you can find that same information and more. We can go to the public comment hearings. We know this was approved as submitted, but we still don't know if someone made a public comment and it just wasn't accepted. So we're going to find out a little more information about this change, um, but we could also use this as a way to not go to that first section that we just went to because we'll get the same information here, the committee results. So let's push on this button here for the public comment agenda. We'll click on this. It's going to bring us to a number of different PDFs. Again, we're going to look for the one that is IRC plumbing. And so here we are, IRC plumbing. We'll click that. And now this is going to take us to the results of the public comment hearing. And I can see here I'm already on RP1, so I don't need to download it and search. I can probably just scroll through. I bet I'm going to find RP8 if it's here pretty soon. Um, don't know if a public comment was submitted or not. Wait, here we go. Okay, I do see RP8. So as I said before, we, we can get the committee action results right here. We can really get everything in this one spot once we're searching. We got the proponent reason statement here. We've got the committee action results here. And then below we can see that indeed there was a public comment. Now I didn't come to this the first time because we weren't sure if this would even be here, this information. If there was no public comment for this uh, committee approval, we wouldn't find this information in this document, which is why we didn't come to this document first. But here we can see that there is a proponent that put in, or an opponent that put in a public comment that does not believe this should be approved. Um, we can see who put that in here. That way we can work together with folks. Let's go ahead and stop it here. I'll blow this up and you can read what these people think about why this proposal should not have been approved. So I'll go over one more time what the different results mean. Your AS means as submitted, so there was no change from what the proponent put through. As modified means it was modified during the first hearing. Um, as modified by public comment, AMPC means it was modified by the public comment and in the public comment hearings. And then D for disapproval just means that at some point throughout this whole process, ultimately the proposal ended up disapproved. So if it's as submitted or as modified, 
that doesn't mean that there was or wasn't a public comment submitted. So sometimes it's helpful to go through that last little bit of research I did here in this video to see what um, opponents or proponents or other people thought about a proposal regardless of whether their thoughts actually made a change to the approval or disapproval of it. That is complete education. And this is how you learn code and this is the process you go through to go beyond the words and really understand the meaning of your various ICC code provisions. I hope that was helpful to you in not only understanding this code change, but in knowing how to understand future code changes. Thanks for watching, thanks for learning, and have a great day.